Donald Trump is a delusional narcissist. Donald Trump is a phony, a fraud, a narcissist. The personal attacks, the threats against principles, freedoms and institution, the flagrant disregard for truth and decency, the reckless provocations, most often for the pettiest and most personal reasons. I think that the worst of it is going to be just the whole debasing, if you will, of our nation. I think the president's debasing the nation? Uh, I don't think there's any question. Dishonesty is Donald Trump's hallmark. This man is a pathological liar. The president uh, has great difficulty with the truth. His promises are as worthless as a degree from Trump University. The distinction you seem to be making is that this president is actively being divisive for the purposes of his own political success. He, he might say that himself. I mean, I, I don't, I think that's self-evident. I think he's unfit for office. Donald is a bully. Normally, I do not comment on what's going on in the presidential election. I will take an exception today. This is not conservatism. What was proposed yesterday is not what this party stands for. And more importantly, it's not what this country stands for. Not only are there many Muslims serving in our armed forces dying for this country, there are Muslims serving right here in the House, working every day to uphold and to defend the Constitution. He's a race-baiting, xenophobic, religious bigot. The man is utterly amoral. Some of our best and biggest allies in this struggle and fight against radical Islamic terror are Muslims. The vast, 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 vast majority of whom are peaceful. He's making the biggest mistake of his presidency by assuming the Kurds are better off today than they were yesterday. That is just unbelievable. I can imagine if Obama said that, what Republicans would be saying now. So I'm going to say it with Trump. That is just uh, unfair, dangerous, and quite frankly, it's dishonorable. Um, there is no Republican Party. There's a Trump Party. The Republican Party is kind of taking a nap somewhere. We should have basically kicked him out of the party. Bullying, the greed, the showing off, the misogyny. Well, what about women? How he's treated women. Yes, I mean, unbelievable. I don't know how women can vote for someone who said what he said about Megyn Kelly. Uh, I'm out. I, I, I can no longer, in good conscience, uh, endorse this person for president. It is some of the most abhorrent and, of, and offensive comments that you can possibly imagine. And you know, my wife and I, we have a uh, we have a 15 year old daughter, and, and if I can't look her in the eye and tell her these things, I can't endorse this person. And that apology, that was no apology. That that was an apology for getting caught. That was not an apology for the behavior. Well. I don't know, he's like a, a comedian or like a showman or something. He's oh, not. Wow. Yes. And it's just the whole thing is not working with Congress, not working with... That's the way things get done in this country. So I certainly don't hold up President Trump as a leader. I don't think he is. I think he's an entertainer and I think he's a politician. As an entertainer, he focuses on himself. A leader focuses on those they serve. And I disagree profoundly with how Trump does everything. A business genius he is not. It was challenging for me, uh, coming from the disciplined, highly process-oriented Exxon Mobil Corporation to go to work for a man who is pretty undisciplined, uh, doesn't, doesn't like to read, doesn't read briefing reports, doesn't, 
doesn't like to get into the details of a lot of things, but rather just kind of says, look, this is what I believe. A speck of dirt is way more qualified to be president. We did not have a common value system. When the president would say, well, here's what I want to do, and, and here's how I want to do it. And I'd have to say to him, well, Mr. President, I understand what you want to do, but you can't do it that way. Uh, it violates the law. It violates the treaty. You know, it, he got really frustrated. It's not just the Ukrainian call. There will be other elements of this story that unfold where people will say, okay, wait a minute, there's a combination of incompetence, there's a combination of a, a, a destruction of the executive branch of the United States, in addition to the lawlessness uh, and traitorous-like behavior. So, Traitorous-like uh, behavior? Oh, there's no question. I mean, you're, you, you, if you're... If Strong you're, word. Well, what word would you use? You're, you're on the phone with the president of the Ukraine and you're strong-arming him uh, to have him go after your political opponent. Okay, that is, you've become a traitor to the Constitution and a traitor to the laws of the United States. So, do you want to pretend that it's not traitorous behavior? We can pretend that it isn't.